I'm uh, obviously delighted to be here. My full name is Jyotsna Pataviraman, but as it's a name that's hard to say and even harder to read, most people just call me Joe. And uh, I was one of the earliest Melton Fellows chosen from this campus. It was really strange. Uh, you heard all the speakers talk about how young kids or college going children or whatever, young adults don't like to attend college. So I was one of them. And uh, there was an envelope, when I got home one day, there was an envelope sitting in, in my house. And my mother was pretty sure that it was an envelope from the principal pulling me up for lack of attendance or something like that. So she waited very dramatically till I got home and then she opened it and instead of some kind of uh, punishment, it was actually an invitation for me to interview with the Melvin Foundation. Um, at that time, having something like the Melvin Foundation come to Bangalore to BMS, it was something unprecedented. So uh, the institution chose its top 100 students to even apply. And then after the application, there was like a five stage process, after which uh, you know, I, was, I was one of the five chosen. So that was my first, uh, my, my introduction to the Melvin Foundation. And as it happens, uh, my life has been influenced tremendously. I think my choice of career uh, was because of my exposure to the foundation, my what I did subsequently, my uh, whatever inspires me has something to do with the foundation. And whenever I am down, like I always feel that an interaction with the foundation picks me up. So I honestly feel like it's a family, and it just so happens like it turns out that I'm one of the older members of the family, so I have younger people coming to me for advice which is always very heartening. So all in all, it's been a tremendous experience. I wouldn't have gone uh, where I'm gone if it weren't for the foundation. So you are in Bangalore. You're born here, you live here. Uh, what do you do for a living? I'm an entrepreneur. I uh, was born here. I haven't lived here a lot. I, after my graduation, I, I went to the US. I was there for the majority of my time. I worked uh, initially as an engineer and then in, on the business side, of lots of internet companies when they were still growing. And uh, around... Uh, so you did like college, after all. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I, I didn't like the experience of going to college. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, so, you know, so I went, I went to the US, I lived there, I lived, moved up in Silicon Valley. And then around 2008, uh, we decided to come back. Well, late 2007, we decided to come back because we felt that there was a lot more happening here and we felt we could contribute a lot more. So we moved back and I guess they couldn't survive without us in the US, the markets crashed and so forth. But we were very happy out here and um, when I came here I was able to pursue my, what I always wanted to do which is to be an entrepreneur. So I had uh, two companies, one company is a movie streaming uh, company uh, called Movie Shui. Uh, the other one is a kids wear company, that one was venture funded. Um, in general I like to be involved with startups and I'm going more towards uh, entrepreneur education and, and I'd like to teach at some point about how to so, start a company. Right now your startups are out of Bangalore. Yes. What, are, what are the biggest challenges for startup companies here in India or in Bangalore? I can assume that it might be different from Delhi or, or, or Mumbai or other places. Absolutely. I think uh, you'll have to stop me because I can keep going. I think I will. <laughs> Uh, one of the issues here is uh, kind of the legal framework. So you have to jump through a lot of things before you can start a company. Second thing is, uh, because of the culture, even though you get very good employees, there's a lot of talent. Uh, people are not uh, graduating. Parents are not sending their children to college hoping that they will join a startup. So it's sometimes very hard to get parental involvement. And um, I think the ecosystem is still in this very early growth phase. So one needs to have a long-term perspective on this. Eventually, there will be a lot of excellent companies. We'll have a culture like, you know, Silicon Valley. It's just going to take a little bit of time. What is the culture of Silicon Valley? So it's, it's a culture where startups doing something on your own uh, is actually appreciated. I think that it's the cool thing to do for you to invent something, to start something, to kind of not to confirm, to be different from the others. Whereas uh, here, it's not quite the case. I think the um, well, the hopes that parents have for the children is you will finish your education and then you finish your education and then join a large company. It's kind of antithetical to what's happening mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley. So, what, 
where do you see change in this way in India? Yeah. When you say usually it's, you know, that the parents put some kind yeah. of pressure on their children yeah. to get, you know, education and then go into a company, as you said. Yeah. So uh, where do you see change there? Well, I think that um, the way that I'm seeing change is that a lot of well-educated young people are saying that uh, a corporate job may not be for me. A lot of people are finding the courage to explore other things. Well, I'm not against large companies at all. I've worked for very large companies. I've had a great time there. It's just that people shouldn't think that's the default setting. Right? So uh, we in the Melbourne community are people who uh, authors and um, kind of uh, started their own businesses and so on and so forth, which I feel is more of a culture of experimentation, finding your own path, uh, which is what I'd like to see. I think that when young people start finding the courage to say, all right, I'm not going to leave my job, but I'm going to develop my talent in something else, maybe a talent in dance, talent in music, uh, maybe not even a talent, just an interest in filmmaking or photography, whatever the case, I think that would be a very good sign that they develop a side of themselves outside of work. And then whether that leads to being entrepreneurial or not, I can't say, but I think it leads more to being a whole person. And I see the change coming from the edges like that. Okay. Uh, are there any specific fields where you see more changes or less? For example, when you look into technology and mm -hmm. you compare the Silicon Valley, which yeah. is basically about technology. Right. Do you see it in other fields as well? Well, one thing I would say in Silicon Valley, uh, the, uh, the, the technology is what is best, best known for because that's where people make money. But there's a lot of uh, activity in food, in the arts, in the energy, in kind of enjoying nature. All of those things, uh, you know, are also synonymous with the living in, in San Francisco and the Bay Area. And I see the same thing happening in Bangalore. I see people uh, taking up things like terrace gardening. I see them you know, wanting to learn to make film. I see them. I see uh, you know changes happening in the arts. So all of those things I, I see. In addition to technology, in fact, I see technology lagging. I think people. I see people embracing a change in their lifestyle, and I see a lot of innovation happening there. Um, you know, Bangalore has been kind of a, or even in India, it's a kind of a hotbed of innovation in a in a thousand different ways, and I see the change coming from there as well. Was there, was there any specific reason that the Global Citizenship Conference is right here in Bangalore? Are there any specific movements or...? Yes, actually, um, the, from a purely mechanics point of view, we have a Global Citizenship Conference in a different part of the world every year. But in Bangalore, we find that uh, there is a movement to get people more involved in the city, you know, to take ownership for the city. And that itself is quite a big change because for the longest time in India, we're like uh, the the concept was we are the uh, people, we are the ruled, and then it's a responsibility of the government to provide these things for us. And now again, we see an innovation there where people are taking ownership and saying, well, we want to uh, you know get rid of the garbage or we want to improve the standard of living and. Uh, we want to, uh, you know, ex uh, understand how much money our politicians make. And so I think there's kind of a citizen's movement which is happening for the first time in Bangalore. So I think uh, while there isn't a deeper meaning about why the GCC is being held here, I think the timing and the, uh, the resonance is, is very good. Yeah, talking about this global citizenship and now broke it down to, to the city like Bangalore. but. Doesn't what India needs is also a village mm -hmm. citizenship? I, I sure. think like, yeah. I ha and how can this be, you know, put up the ladder to the bigger city, to the country, to global? Absolutely. I think um, I, I, when you were here at the Supreme Court sessions, you might have heard Gregor McLennan talking about the rights of indigenous people. I think for the longest time, uh, not just us, but almost everywhere, we've been looking only towards moving towards cities and I think that by, as we get educated and we get more connected with things which are happening in other parts of the world, we can realize that development is not always about urbanization, it can be about going back to the village. So the village for the uh, long time has been like a hub of community and I think that uh, the move, I don't know what to make of this um, uh, movement towards cities. I think there's scope for both. I think that there's certain things that we kind of have to pick up from villages, 
and there are certain things that people in the Middle East can pick up from cities. So um, I can see that global citizenship can give us a more nuanced understanding of what it means to be developed in that sense. What does actually global citizenship mean to you? To me, it means uh, having an awareness of issues that we all have in common around the globe and taking action to solve those uh, problems collaboratively. And here what we're doing now is at first exchanging information so that we can say, I'm doing this in my part of the world, what are you doing? And then I think that can become the basis of some collaborative action which I see happening in a couple of years. So we finished the first day here, actually the springboard sessions. Mm -hmm. What was the major thing for you, what you've heard today, if you would have to pick out one thing? What would it be? Well, I honestly was definitely moved by what uh, Greta had to say. It's actually the, the kind of the pictures, the stories, the human side of it, and how they won against these oil companies was the most amazing thing for me. I think we've always been brought up to say, uh, similar to what he said, that there's certain things that you're, you tend to feel helpless in the face of great odds. If you're a very powerful enemy, you, you can, you, one tends to be very healthy, he's very helpless. But uh, hearing the story about how these uh, smaller communities in Amazon won against large oil companies was, was very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And what is your personal takeaway regarding your uh, business? For my business, from this, um, I can't really say that I've taken anything away from my business. No. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine as well. That's fine as well. Actually, you are the host. <laughs> right. of the, uh, <laughs> Global uh, Citizenship Conference. What was your experience? What did you learn? How did you pick up people? And um, you know, it, it was a, a kind of a great journey for me. And I was thinking about this morning because when we first got here, uh, when I first agreed to do the MC, I wasn't ex expecting to go on a journey myself. I thought I'm going to just introduce these people and be done with it. But um, Kind of trying to correlate the different stories, uh, trying to um, evolve in that sense, and then uh, both um, Vince Rock and Vicks were very clear that they didn't uh, think the best experience for the audience would be for me just to read something out. So uh, I really had to push myself uh, to learn something about these folks and introduce them in a way that they'd want to be introduced. So that was a uh, that was a great experience. And as a speaker, also going through this whole uh, PowerPoint taught me something uh, about myself. Uh, in fact, I was really struggling to put put down these various aspects and I think it kind of came together really well, you know, just this morning thanks to all the collaboration, all the input that I had um, from Martha and Rob and Dix. So I think I have grown as a person. I'm sorry to say it sounds like a cliche, but I really, cliche, but it really means, I really mean it, um, that I've kind of, definitely I'm a different person than I was you know, two, three days back when I started off this. That's very interesting. And I also very, I mean, it seems to me as I arrived kind of late today, but it's still a very network-based thing here. Yeah. Uh, how would you describe the network here of this, uh, of the, of the, of the foundation and how, yeah, how this everything yeah, is within uh, the network? Within the network of the fellows or the speakers? Of the foundation, of the which foundation. probably includes both. <laughs> right. So um, I think a couple of years ago, or maybe three years ago, we all started thinking about that we have a very close network um, of the fellows. But um, maybe for the amount of effort we're putting into it, we can kind of open our platform. Yes. And I happened to be on the board with um, with Rob at that time, and I was, uh, you know, we, so we kind of worked together along with a whole bunch of other people working very hard on this kind of concept. And uh, we took a conscious decision that for us to be actually impactful, we have to open the platform, we have to work with other people, we have to figure out what they are doing, and then we have to uh, work symbiotically with them. And um, so I think that uh, the network today you're seeing, I, I hope that through these string board sessions, it will become an exponentially larger network, it will be a network of networks so to speak, and that will help us all be much more uh, effective in whatever we're doing to, to have an impact on the world.